Hi, this is Hape, the Crafty Chemist. Welcome to my coloring table. Time for some Hape coloring and Circle of Life. The pencils that'll be used today are Brute Funer Square Pencils. They came in a case that was, it's a black tin, and it was covered with a piece of paper, like cardboard paper that couldn't be saved, like a little sleeve. Opening up the pencils, there is, it looks like this fell off. That's okay, we're just gonna take a look at it. A chart in number order of all of the pencil colors with their names in it. And it goes with the number. I don't really care too much about the names, but they also sent a swatch chart, which I filled out with the pencils in the order that they were in. And like in the, in the tents, the pencils actually have the case has these elastic handles and it has a very small sort of footprint. This is the smallest of the tins that I've gotten, but I had trouble with the way this was because there's 120 pencils in here. And that means there's three trays with 40 pencils in each tray. And I couldn't figure out where the end of each of the trays were. And I could have probably come up with a better way to do this, but uh, on their provided DIY color page, but this is not very good paper or anything. So I made my own swatch of the pencils as they appeared in the tray, which wasn't too bad because it gave a fairly decent color order for them. And I'm continuing to use this, but you'll see that I have rearranged the pencils into number order because I was going crazy trying to figure out which one I was trying to pick up. The number sequence doesn't make any sense to me. The names do not appear in English on the pencils. So here is a pencil that is number 93 and it has, I'm assuming, Chinese characters on it. And this one's called Bone Brown. If you look at the, the name on the the color chart name thing that they, that they include. The other thing that made it difficult having them in the order that they came in instead of like a number order was that the slots for the pencils are not very deep. And so the pencils slide around a lot. And there's even, I believe, a disclaimer that they could have slid around and you aren't missing pencils, they've just slid. So for instance, like they can um, slide quite a bit and then sometimes they would fall out of place and then I was trying to figure out which order were they in so that I could match them up to the order that they arrived in and I was like this is too much for my brain to handle I'm going to keep this color order thing and then if I want a pencil say I want a particular blue pencil um, like number 34 I use actually a lot I believe um, or actually 29 I use a lot but then I know that it's in the tray, the first tray, which I believe I have these reversed right now, because this is 80, this one's 81 to 120. Um, that way when I pull them out, I can put them off to the side. And so I can come in here and like here's number 35 and I can just find it really easily. So I, I'm glad that I rearranged them into number order. It made my life and my brain a lot happier. So these are the pencils that um, will be used. They do not work with a for sharpening in a round pencil sharpener unless you have a really big one because they are square, which does make it so that they don't roll around a lot on the table. I find that very nice too. You see like these are all out of track now <laughs> since I played with it. Um, so I use the, I use an X-Acto pencil sharpener, the, the school professional one, and I can put it on the triangle shape on the middle and get them sharpened. Even though I've used these a lot, the color doesn't, like, it doesn't put a lot of color down with each layer. So it doesn't look like they've been used all that much. Um, I think there's only maybe one pencil, like this one here, I, you can tell number 29, I do use a lot. And I used it a lot on the page that I'm about to color. So these are the pencils that I'm using. Um, the numbers that you see will correspond to the numbers on the pencils. And I'm not going to go with any kind of names of the colors because they're they're funny and um, 
just sometimes you're like, what? Um, so, uh, like there's one number 87 is Majolica blue, I guess is how you would say it. I don't know. So some of the, the word, the names are just a little bit weird. Belgaia block is number 26. I don't know what those are. So, um, I actually lost a couple of my videos that I had put together for this, um, including this one that I talked about the pencils a little bit uh, and the start of the page that I'm coloring out of Circle of Life. So you'll see that it's already started a little bit, but it should be pretty easy to figure out what was missing and to catch up. This is our starting point. There's some shading and a little bit of silver lining. The first part of this video will actually color in the center part of the snowflake and then we'll move back to the outside part. The video has been edited down to about 30 minutes from over two hours of recording time. good at layering they don't really blend into each other but you can layer lots of colors and so that's what I've been doing for the past few minutes is just deciding where I need to layer some more color in to make things um, have a little bit more depth of color instead of being just very very flat 
and you can kind of see a difference between how things look now and how they were looking when I stopped the video last. And the changes that each of the layers makes are very, very subtle, but I do want to like emphasize where the coloring book artist put texture into the image with just you know, very light layers of grays and then continue to add my peaches over the top of that so that eventually this will look like a cliff on the side of the ocean somewhere in the northern part of the world looking a lot like um, North Pole area since we have polar bears. I haven't decided how I want to color the igloo yet but it'll have to match the peaches to gray and purplish colors that I have going on with the side of the cliff and the sky and the clouds. I chose this color for the seals because it's actually called seal brown. I kind of wish that I'd uh, picked a little bit different color, a little bit more gray, because this turned out to be a little bit more yellow than I wanted it to be. So I just shaded the seals in with a little bit of that gray. Next up, I'll color on the polar bears a little bit. And polar bears don't actually have a color. They kind of are the color of their surroundings. So I went with some really warm colors for them initially and then added in a little bit of the gray. This color is for their noses. And I used a little bit of 51 for their paws. Next, I'm going to move to the color of the water. And number 35 is going to provide some shadows underneath the little ice shelves. And then the rest of the water is going to reflect what's going on in the sky. fish are going to be colored a gray color number 27. 
the birds I imagined were puffins and so they are a darker gray color, number 28. To smooth out some of the color of the polar bear, I'm using the white pencil that came with the Brute Funer Squares. Time to color the igloo. It's going to match the cliffs, be darker at the bottom, and get to the lighter peach at the top. Once the igloo is done, I'm going to go back into my cliffs and darken up the base of the cliffs and around the polar bears so that the polar bears pop from the page a little bit more. I'm also adding more layers of the other colors to sort of brighten up the cliffs. Eighty-four was the color that I used on the larger spikes on the snowflake, and I didn't color the whole thing in. I allowed the white of the paper to stick out. I have traced all of the black around the snowflake with a silver marker and I've colored in each of the longer points with number 84. You wouldn't need to trace around it, I just, that's what I wanted to do. And so now I'm going to color in all of the little dots with number 84 and then draw around each of them, probably with the silver marker, and then make the, uh, around the outside with 29 into the uh, Dermot Drawing Smoke Blue 3810. In one of the earlier videos that was lost, I explained why I used the Dermot Drawing Pencil. You could use one of the pencils from the square kit, but I was trying to transition this very light blue out to a gray color, and it was a good transition color. The Dermot Drawing Pencils are some of my favorites. I've done a little bit more work on the page. I have circled all of the shapes like the little snowflakes and circles and stars and stuff with the silver pen and then I also traced around the polar bears with some white jelly roll and I did around the clouds to change the color of that a little bit with some of the moonlight um, the moonlight comes with six pens, gray tones, and there's uh, cool gray tones and warm gray tones. I used the warm gray tones here, the darkest on the bottom of the cloud, and the middle in the middle part of the cloud and the lightest at the top of the clouds to give them a little bit of extra dimension I guess you'd say. Um, make it not so flat black with the colors. I don't think I'm going to change any of the other colors. Oh and I did add some of the white to the igloo. Those are just extras. You don't really need to do anything special like that. Um, but I'm going to continue and finish out coloring around the objects in between these two points here and then I will use this pencil to um, fill in the rest of the space around there. I need to make a decision on what to do with the other smaller snowflakes.
So I've been playing a little bit with what I might like to do with the remaining points on the snowflake and the remaining snowflakes. And I'm not really sure. I may just make the snowflakes entirely silver and I haven't filled in anything in the little for the points yet, so I need to still figure that out. So with this 74 pencil, we're going to continue with the same light pressure um, shading around the objects. And it's a long oval shape that I'm going to be draw uh, coloring with here. It's even hard to tell, unless you're looking at it in person, that there's a color in this area here. I want to have it very, very light. And I'm probably going to shade out the edges of it so that I can't see those edges anymore. These pencils are not smooshy into each other pencils like the colors so I can color over other things and it just adds a light shading of the color of the pencil to it instead of completely covering it or smearing that color around. It does take several layers of color before you finally get a very dark color with these pencils. I'm going to finish out the purple sections. I only have two more and the rest of the gray shading and then my page will be done and I'll come back in just a second. Now that everything has been colored on the page, I just need to put my finishing touch on, which is going to be fading out the edge of the snowflake. So I'm gonna use my pencil almost as flat as I can get it onto the page so that I don't get any kind of harsh lines. And I'm just gonna work that edge. And I'm holding the pencil almost at the very end so that I'm putting in a very little pressure on here and I can just smooth out the edge until I have a nice soft transition from the colored area out to the white area. You'll notice that my pencil is not very sharp. It's been dulled down by all of the coloring. I actually didn't want a sharp point while I was coloring any of this background area in here. And if I see anything else that I think needs to be softened up a little bit, I can add a little bit more to it. But I'll need to do this all the way around my circle. You'll notice that I also turned the direction of the book so that I could get the best angle for how my hand lays on the paper so that I don't get any of those harsh lines. It's okay to turn the book while you're coloring. Another thing that changed during the video was that I put this glass um, palette that I have for watercoloring underneath the page. And let me show you why I do that. And I forgot to do it initially, but you'll notice that there's an imprint on the back page of the 
page that faces it. So this is actually the last page of the book, and this is the second to the last page of the book. And when I was coloring in this area, on the opposite side of the paper is the flower and the bee, and it's over here. This happens to me quite a bit, and it transfers from different coloring pages. And if I remember, I'll put that under there. Usually I can erase it pretty well off of the other coloring page, but if I don't have to take that step and try to get things erased, then that's a lot better. Some people will put a piece of plastic in between or another piece of paper. But since this is the last page and I've been turning things around a lot, I went ahead and put this glass page in, or the glass palette in. It's nice. I actually bought this for mixing watercolor paints. So it's a little scratched up, but I don't care. That's what it needs to be. And it didn't, it didn't mess with the, uh, the coloring any. So I'm going to finish up this and I'll show you the end of the page. This is the first page I've colored in the book. So I'll do a little flip through a look at the rest of the book when I have this all done. All right, this is the finished page. There's a little bit of shadows from the light in the room, but you can see the nice sparkle of the silver pen on all the surfaces. And I'll also post the picture so that you can see it a little bit better. But this coloring book is amazing. It has all kinds of circular images in it. So here's some of the other ones that I've picked out to color soon. Um, the solar system. The camping lantern. I don't think there's a single picture in here that I don't like. the four corners of the earth. The hourglass. And the seasons. Of course, there's so many in here that this would be a lovely book to, to finish. Thanks for joining me on my channel as I colored through <laughs> my first picture in Circle of Life using Brute Funer pencils. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.